My question for you this morning as we begin is, do you believe that, that everybody wants to be loved? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I could stand here forever. <laughs> Anybody who doesn't want to be loved here today? No. Okay. Anybody not want to be understood? Anybody not want to be heard? No? Okay, you're saying the truth. And what are we here for? We're here to be the listeners, to be the hearers. We're here to be the understanders. And we are a part, and I consider myself a part, even though I'm only kind of fringe with you for about six months or so. But I consider myself a part of this, to be here to be the lovers, to be the carers, to be those who really, truly support one another. I saw it after our first service. See, today I'm talking about the relationships, the relationship that you have, one with another, and the divine purpose that's been planted in our hearts that put each one that's a part of Unity Spiritual Center on this path. You know, there are no accidents, and if we ever share all our stories, it always kind of blows me away, because this one was raised in this faith, this one and this one, some in Judaism, some in Catholicism, some were Methodist, some were Baptist, but somehow, God took us by the heart and moved us onto this positive path of spiritual living. Was that true? Yeah. And every day of my life, I say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For opening my mind, opening my heart, and opening my life to the friendships that I have in unity. Now, during this period, which is called the transition period, this is the time you know, your wonderful board is getting started early, and Barbara's here, and she's welcoming that, which is... Amazing. I acknowledge you for that, Barb. Um, they realize that this is a time that can be unsettling. But rather than everybody kind of drifting off on their own little glacier, you know, everybody just kind of pulling back and saying, well, I'll do my own thing, and I, you know, I'm going to hold back because I don't know what's going to come of this and all that. Instead, we're asked to come forward. We are all ministers to one another. We are all pastors to one another, whatever you want to call it. Everybody who's connected in this ministry has a special place. It's like this divine puzzle. And if one person's consciousness is out to lunch, if one person is holding back, we're not as powerful as we are if we're all together. On the same page, focused, knowing, knowing that at the right time, at the right time, in the right way, the right person, the right people are attracted to this ministry. Your ministry will grow during this time because you'll grow in depth. The depth we sang about, about when I pray, I go deeper into God. When I know the truth, I go deeper and deeper and deeper into God. And my faith becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. Tom Spence kept saying it yesterday. He said, it's our faith. He said, I have no doubt that we are going to attract the perfect right person here. And I hear amens to that all the time. You know, from the board and from the people at the first service, and I'm sure from each of you. You know that's true. So I invite you to get on board and to hold that truth, that at the right time and the right way, the right person will be drawn here, and it'll be because you are the perfect people to attract that person. You see, we all need to have, be a part of a clan, part of a tribe, whatever you want to call it, part of a family. We all need to be a part of a body that is moving forward. And I was reminded when I thought about that, about a time years and years ago, well, not that, 2006, it, how time flies, you know, seven years ago. In October, I was up on Mackinac Island with some of three women friends, and we were in a horse and buggy that we'd rented, and the snow started coming down. And I was thinking as I went along, you know, as we, through the woods up there, this gentle snow was as beautiful as it gets, really, in northern Michigan. Um, I was thinking that these women, Bonnie, Mary, and Tony, were the dearest people in the world to me at that time. They were my tribe. I was home. I was home with them. You know how that feels when you know, yeah, 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 this is good God. And that reminded me of what I used to tell our students when they were going out to try out in ministry. I was teaching church leadership. And I would tell them when they went out, you need to ask that question of your heart when you're with the congregation that you're going to see. You need to say to yourself, is this my tribe? 
Are these the people I can hang with? Are these the people that really will accept me with my beauty and my blemish, all that I am, my past, my history, my, what I'm going to become in the future? Are these the people I can love and support? Is this my tribe? And if spirit says to you, as it did to me in a city once when I tried out, said very clearly, no, this is not your tribe, Judy, then please be strong enough to say, no, thank you, if they offer you a position there. Please be strong enough to say, no, thank you. But if it feels right, then give it yourself your 100%. Come to those people. Come to those people and say, here I am, open, receptive, transparent. I'm going to share all that I am of me. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to hear you and get to know you at a depth that as deep as I possibly can. We're going to grow together and work together. And we are family. We are family. In my living room, I have a banner. It's green, it has some Chinese figures on the top, and it asks me three questions. It says, in the end, what matters most is this. How well did you live? How well did you love? And this is the hard one. How well did you learn to let go? You know, sometimes letting go is the hardest part of love. <coughs> letting go of our kids as they go off to college. Letting go of a loved one when they pass on. It's not easy, is it? Somebody who's been very important in your life. Letting go sometimes of a partner or a spouse so that they may do what they need to do and re release you to do what you need to do and be in this world. It's not easy. It's not easy to release a minister. But can we learn to let go with a sense that says, I want only the highest and best for you. Go with God. Vaya con Dios. Vaya con Dios. Go with God. I'll be with you in spirit. I may not see you every Sunday. I may not see you every day. But I'll be knowing the very best for you. At the end of our unity conferences, there's always a service. It's, you know, we have that conference every June, and Stan and Barb have gone. <coughs> and there's always a, a service. And the incoming president gives the message and sort of sets the keynote the note tone for what her year or his year is going to be like and when they are the, the chair of the board. And a few years ago when Sharon Connor assumed that position, took the mantle on, she looked at us in a way that I swear, you know, each one of us thought she's only looking at me. She's only talking to me here. And she said, what I want you to know this year is that every day someone is thinking kindly of you. What I want you to know is someone is thinking kindly of you. I will be there with you. I will be blessing each of you. I will speak your names. I will keep a picture of all of us together, you know, on my desk. And I wrote that on my top, I had it on the top of my daily word holder that sat on my desk then, after I went back. And on a day when I felt like, oh, shoot, nobody loves me, everybody hates me, you know, guess I'll go eat worms, guess I wasn't cut out for this anyway, guess we don't have enough of this, and blah, 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 blah. And I was tell into all that monkey chatter. You know, when I was there, I would look at that, and someone is thinking kindly of me, and it always brought me back to center. That's how we minister to one another. You don't always have to be there physically, but we do need to be there spiritually because you are all ministers. We are all ministers to one another. So we ask ourselves, because this relationship is the heart of ministry, we have to ask ourselves, well, what does it mean to be a true friend? Do I listen enough? Do I love deeply enough? Do I really care? Am I serving this family or this community well? Or am I a taker? Am I withdrawing energy? Am I complaining and whining and <coughs> fearful about everything that it isn't going to work out and I'm draining energy? You know what happens when we withdraw too much from the bank? Withdraw and forget to put deposit in? You know what happens? Yeah, it gets empty, you get stressed, everything, everything tightens up, the bank says, no more, sweetie, no more, you know. <laughs> No more, you can't have any more out of this little cash machine. So what we need to do is say, you know, am I a giver? Am I depositing into the welfare of this ministry the very best that I have to offer? 
Am I giving abundantly? If this is Prosperity Sunday, it's not only money. It's am I giving my love? Am I sharing freely? Robert Frost has one of his poems has this in it. It says, when a friend calls to me from the road and slows his horse to a meaning walk, I don't stand and look around on all the hills I haven't hoed and shout from where I am, what is it? What do you need? You know, sorry, I'm busy. I can't deal with it right now. He says, no, not as there is time to talk. There is a time to talk. So I thrust my hoe in the mellow ground, blade end up and five feet tall, and I plod. I go up to the stone wall for a friendly visit. So it happens, doesn't it? Right after church, somebody may need to talk to you. Or somebody may call you on the phone. Can we make a commitment not to look at caller ID and if it sees that <coughs> this is somebody that maybe takes going to take 30 minutes, go, oh, I don't know if I'm there. You see, we are all one. And when one of us pulls our energy out by saying, I don't have time, or I don't have the energy, or I need more, or whatever it is, when we are not on the path of positivity and upliftment and love, when we're not there, everyone suffers. And we don't even know it. We don't know what we lose until we really take a look at what it means to be one and to feel the, the, the composite strength that comes from all of us praying and working together. We had an experience this morning that I have to tell you about. Do any of you know Dorothy Pearson? You of her? Yeah. Okay, some of you do. Well, she was my spiritual... She introduced me to Unity at Unity of Hawaii on Diamond Head Circle back in nine, February 1965. And has always meant so much to me. And Dorothy made her transition at 97 years of age, Thursday morning at five minutes of 11. Now, Dorothy went to work in Silent Unity in 1938, 75 years ago. That's when she started working for Unity. And every day, in all the years she worked there, and we worked there, um, at, five, at 11 o'clock on Thursday morning, they always play Charles Fillmore's voice, and he speaks the Lord's Prayer. And still goes on in his voice every single day. <clears throat> So I thought, isn't that significant that my mother joined Mr. Fillmore, our father, on that day, you know, right at that time, at 11 o'clock. But what happened last night was that I was thinking about all of you and about the fun I have with your board and the excitement that I believe is here, the good that's unfolding here, and I wasn't sleeping. And so that started at 1.30 and it went on most of the night. And during that night, I was connecting with my spiritual mother, connecting with Dorothy and feeling her presence and feeling her love and thinking about many of the wonderful things we did together in the swimming in the ocean together and the little troll that sits in my backyard that she gave me and a picture on my wall and, and all her poems. and I was just so with her last night. And somewhere in the middle of that, the song kept started in my mind, The Rainbow Connection. And I started singing it. Songs about rainbows, what's on the other side? Rainbows are visions, but only illusions, and rainbows have nothing to hide. So we've been told, and some choose to believe it. I know. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. So, what happened last night? Thanks so much, Bonnie. What happened last night? I'm thinking this song, I'm thinking, I'd really prefer to be sleeping. But I'm doing the Rainbow Connection all night, right? And, and, you know, Hawaii is rainbows. You do know that. Most everybody's been there, and there's no rainbows like Hawaii. So anyway, we were driving in this morning from Barbara's house. And as we're driving along, I said to her, it was so weird last night. I'm thinking of Dorothy, and all of a sudden, and I, I started the Rainbow Connection, and I can't stop thinking it. 
And Barbara said to me, why don't you stand up and tell them what you said? <laughs> I said, when I was in the shower this morning, I started singing the Rainbow Connection out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> and she said, I don't know why. I don't know why I was singing it, you know? Why am I singing the Rainbow Connection? Well, that's the kind of oneness that we have. Well, that is so shows to me how finely we are tuned to one another and how important it is that we love at that level together. So I'm going to ask you in your friendships as, with our congregation and, and at work and wherever you might be this week and next week and during this time particularly, take a look and analyze what kind of a friend am I? How do I show up with people? There are five kinds. There are hello friends. You know what they are. They're the ones that give you a nod, wave when they go past. Um, just keep going, you know, just keep going. You probably don't know their name. Um, maybe where you're a hello friend with people. I am. I know that. Two gentlemen, every morning, I walk my dog this way, they go this way, we say, hello, have a good day, or do you think it's going to rain today? And you know, when you live up where I do, there's nobody else on the road anyway, so we really could stop and say more. But we don't. We walk on by each other. We're hello friends. And then there are conversation friends. And that would be the ones that actually would say, what are you going to do today? Are you having a good day? How do you feel? How's your wife Judy? You know, blah, blah. And we'd have a little conversation. Then there's activity friends. I consider them my golfing friends to be activity friends. You know, we ride together in the cart for two hours in the morning in our league. We talk a little bit. Sometimes we have lunch together, but we don't talk about anything significant. It's all golf. It's all activity. It's all... It could all be the movie if it's an activity friend, you know, somebody you do things with. Can even be bridge people, but you don't know them at any depth. And then we have fighting friends. And those are the ones that we can disagree with, and we can have it out with, and we know that we're loved anyway. Are you a fighting friend with somebody? You know, I find that a, I have a few of those, like a sister. My sister was a fighting friend, and we loved each other dearly, and we were fighting friends. My husband at times can be the fighting friend that causes a few little problems there. You know, we have, we have people where we have that kind of a connection, but then we have holy friends, Jesus friends, if you would. These are the ones who love you enough, who understand and listen to what you have to say, who care deeply about you, and we can be that kind of a friend for others. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we do that by making ourselves known. Not, you know, we're only as sick as our secrets. So not hiding behind a facade that all is well, everything's good, you know, playing nicey-nicey with one another, but being honest, being honest with one another. And at those times when we're the ones that need lifting up, letting people know that, trusting each other with our innermost thoughts and our deepest beliefs. We can say, make it very clear by our actions, by our attitudes, by our conversation that I value all that you are. I value you on your good days. I value you on your other days. I love you no matter what. There is nothing you can say or do that will make me stop loving you. There is nothing you can say or do that will make me stop loving you. So when you're out running amok, when you go into the wilderness, when you go into depression, I love you anyway. I love you. I am there with you. I care. And I reach to hold your hand and to help lift you. Another way is to let those we love be who they are, not to try to change them, to listen with our head and our heart, with understanding and love. I love you and I let you be who you are. And it is not my job to try to create you in, the image, in my image. God created you perfectly in God's image. I can see the Christ in you. Now we sing it. We say, I behold the Christ as you. Don't we say that? Do you do that when you receive new members here at the church? I behold the Christ as you. But we can demonstrate that, and I want to think about that. How can we demonstrate that? How can we show that truly we value this person as a son, as a daughter of God? And we can move from that place of thinking that, well, if I do this, if I reach out, if I risk, if I risk so much, maybe they're going to shun me. Maybe they're going to close the door on me, so I'm going to keep my distance. Or I'm, if, I, 
if I give too much, I'll lose and they'll win. You know, I'll be the giver and I'm going to lose. We have to move to that place where we know it is an us thing. It is a we thing. We are ministers to one another. I believe in you. I love you. I'm grateful for you. You have changed me. And we let others know that. That's what I saw after the first service in a couple of places where I saw people saying to one another, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the difference you have made in my life. You may not even know it, but when you come into the room and you smile and you look at me and you look into my heart, deep in my heart, it makes all the difference in the world for me. At, in our weddings, my husband and I often use the poem by Mary Carolyn Davies, if a couple chooses it. It's called On Friendship. How many of you know that poem? If you do? It starts with, usually, I love you not only for what you are, but for what you are making of me. And now here's the part I'd like us to remember today. I love you for putting your hand into my anxious heart and passing over all the frivolous and the weak things you cannot help seeing there. I love you for closing your eyes to the discords in me and drawing out into the light all the beautiful and the radiant things that no one else has looked quite far enough to find. I love you for ignoring the possibilities of the fool in me and laying hold of the possibilities of good in me. And again, I love you for closing your eyes to the discords in me and adding to the music in me by worshipful listening. You do this without a word, without a sign. You do this simply by being yourself. And that's what it means to be holy friends. That's what it means to be invested in one another, invested in this ministry, which is a consciousness of people, a consciousness of love. And so I invite you today, are you willing? Are you willing to take a look and ask yourself those questions? Have I loved enough? Have I loved deeply enough? Have I listened enough? And am I willing to let go? Am I willing to let others be who they are? and behold the Christ in them as I behold the Christ in each of you today and every day. God bless.